It's Monday, April 8th, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. So glad you can join us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. We start with some good news for recently retrenched workers of Gymnasium Limited. Sports Minister John King tells Barbados Today the workers are likely to receive their severance this week. Last Friday, 35 employees received their termination letters, but not their outstanding monies as they were sent home. King tells Barbados Today the issues have now been sorted out. They will receive their money hopefully by tomorrow. It's just a matter of checking everything finished. It's a matter of transferring funds from one year to the next. The National Sports Council has taken over the management of the gymnasium. Government is making good on its promise to address the environmental and security woes at the Milton Lynch Primary School. What of this from President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Sean Spencer. Speaking on the sidelines of the union's 45th annual conference at the Savannah Hotel this morning, he told Barbados today significant improvements have been made. To my knowledge, there is work ongoing at the Milton Link School, where I do know for a fact that the air conditioning units would have been looked at. There was also some fencing work done, but the more the heavy work, I think, would be a matter for this summer. But as it stands right now, some work has begun, and I think that we would like to go and visit to see what would have been done so we could actually map out what is to be done. Spencer added that the union is heartened by the efforts being made by the Ministry of Education to correct problems plaguing the island's schools. What the ministry has proposed is to look at schools on a case-by-case -case basis which you could understand and appreciate because I do believe it's not a one-fit bill and you can't prescribe for one school and the second likewise. What it does tell me is that at least there's some intention to address the issues and if there is a problem with the financial gap, I, do would, I would like to think that they would address us and have us come on board and at least visit these schools and see what is to be done, have us be able to speak with our members and consult and then link to the dialogue because it's not just a matter of having these things done, it's having them done properly to the point where it can then lend to more salubrious surroundings in the schools and therefore the challenges that we do experience now will become a thing of the past for at least the next 10 to 15 years. Prime Minister Mia Motley has been assuring Barbadians leaving in Canada that her government is on top of the crime situation. The issue was raised by participants attending a town hall meeting that Motley hosted in Montreal last evening. She acknowledged that the murder rate is troubling and unusual for the country, but maintained that government has taken measures to arrest the problem. Motley highlighted the recent changes to the Bail Act, which stipulates that anyone charged with murder should not be considered for bail for 24 months as a major step. We commit that we have to get these cases done quickly. Um, I announced the addition of three more criminal high courts to the two that we have existing so that there'll be five criminal high courts operating very shortly. Similarly, that in addition to that, we are not going to agree that anyone should get bail for the first 24 months um, having been charged with murder, treason, or firearm offense because we believe that six to nine months for murder cases is more than enough time for the cases to be heard at first instance and then probably about another 12 months until it goes through the two other appellate stages. A retired Barbadian nurse was fatally shot in the Boston community of Mattapan sparking outrage. Police say 74-year-old Eleanor Maloney, who worked at the Boston Medical Center for 44 years, was caught in the crossfire in a shooting on Saturday around 5 p.m. We have the story from WCVB5 television. This was an innocent woman who was struck by gunfire. This should not be tolerated. Police Commissioner Gross beyond upset over a triple shooting around 5 p.m. yesterday that claimed the life of a Boston woman in her 70s as she enjoyed the sunshine outside her Mattapan Street home. SWAT teams secured the scene. Canine units and detectives canvassed the neighborhood looking for evidence and witnesses to the shooting. Two men have non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. Sources telling News Center 5 the woman who died was tragically caught in the crossfire. This is a beautiful community. This is a strong 
family from Barbados. Nobody deserves this. These people certainly don't. By the end of July this year, investors in the renewable energy sector will have a more structured environment in which to operate. Minister of Commerce, Small Business and Entrepreneurship Dwight Sutherland said Cabinet has just approved a renewable energy policy which will see the Fair Trading Commission setting rates for investors in the sector. We have the responsibility for setting the rates so that people can invest. The last decade or the last decade, we never had a, a renewable energy policy. Clap yourself. We took a renewable energy policy to cabinet that this, the last administration refused to finalize. We finalized it within the last two cabinet meetings. And indeed we are on our way to unlocking growth in the renewable energy sector in this country. That is just about one of the areas in renewable energy that I spoke about just now. We have to set rates for investors to feel comfortable to invest in renewable energy. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional happenings now in Trinidad and Tobago, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley is trying to drum up public support for the unexplained wealth bill, which was crafted to take the profits out of crime. At a PNM meeting at the weekend, Rowley declared that crime was running rampant in the country, and if the country wanted to that to change, then the bill must be passed. We get more in this report from TV6 News. While opposition members are critical of the 75 clause bill and the government's approach to it, Prime Minister Dr. Rowley said the citizenry ought to be excited because it will offer law enforcement much needed tools to combat criminality. Labeling the fear of crime the number one pressure on the country, he called on citizens to voice their support. Your story is that this country is just too corrupt and we have to make changes wherever the corruption is and give the law enforcement authorities the ability to come after those who are criminals in society. The fighting of crime is not only about those who are violent. The white collar criminals are more insidious and dangerous to the people of Trinidad and Tobago in some ways. With the Financial Intelligence Unit reporting $22 billion in suspicious financial activities in 2017, the Prime Minister said the country cannot allow such a large quantity of dirty money to continue to flow through the system. On the international scene, President Donald Trump removes the director of the U.S. Secret Service one day after the ouster of the Homeland Security Secretary. Here's the details in this CNN report. One day after the Homeland Security Secretary was forced to resign from her position, we are now learning that the Secret Service Director Randolph Tex Alice is also being removed from his position. Now, President Trump has instructed his Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney, to fire Alice, but he still remains in this position. But we're told that while he's still there, though, he is being he is on the way out, Brianna, and they have asked him to leave the to leave the Secret Service. Now, an, an official told CNN, "quote There is a near systematic purge happening at the nation's." second largest national security agency because of course you can't ignore that this is coming the news of this is coming just one day after Kirsten Nielsen walked into the White House yesterday sat down with President Trump for about half an hour and he demanded her resignation as he's grown frustrated with immigration numbers in recent days this also comes as we're being told by several other sources that Stephen Miller who was chief in, uh, in critical and pushing out Nielsen also wants several other DHS officials to leave DHS as well of course Brianna you know 
no secret service falls under dhs so this is of course under uh nielsen's purview as she's still there leading the agency until wednesday but we are being told that now the secret service director is going to be removed from his position and that's news but for the very latest visit our website at www.barbedestoday.bb you can also subscribe to our e-paper email updates so like us on facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via whatsapp we're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.